Hi, CCF here again. Powering down. But don't worry, it's not the end of cheer for me. This is just a temporary measure today, whilst I perform an upgrade on my cheer harvester. So this is a Dell Precision T3620. Um, that has a T3060 uh, Ti uh, NVIDIA graphics card inside, 32 gig of RAM. Uh, I think it's an i7-7000 CPU. Um, the case is suffering a little bit in that the, the back area where the PCIe slots are is broken and so it's difficult to seat the uh, GPU um, well inside it. Um, not only that, the power supply is not adequate to support that GPU and so I have to throttle it back a little bit using um, MSI Afterburner. Um, and there's just not sufficient cooling in the case for what it's doing. Um, so I have made the decision to upgrade the case. Um, I have scoured the internet. Doesn't look like a lot of people have attempted this and I can see why. But you know, based on the success I had with the Dell Optuplex 9020 a small form factor machine into that MSI case, I'm going to attack this one today with a, a different case, which you'll see in a minute. Um, smaller sort of footprint hopefully that is going to fit standing up inside this area um, so I can get more alongside it to do some other jobs. Um, so I'm going to turn this off now um, and take it downstairs and then we'll have a look at what we're going to try and achieve today. Okay so here's the case I bought to put the uh, precision into. It's uh, I believe called it Mirage F6. Uh, it was purchased off of eBuyer. Um, link in the description. Um, it's got a tempered glass side panel. Um, it has got screws. It's not like the one on the MSI Velux where you can just open it with a magnetic connector. Um, so that is pretty a permanent piece of glass. But also a tempered glass front. Um, but what I liked about it was that it's got um, not only three and the back fan, but there are also two roof fans as well. So a total of six ARGB fans in the case. And still has... A considerable amount of room. Um, I think I was spoiled with the MSI Velex case that I did for the Dell Optiplex conversion. Um, this one doesn't have as many nice features at the back to port your cables through, but um, should be okay. Um, what I've done in there is I've put a 750 watt power supply in, more than ample now to run this um, for cheer harvesting both now and in the future when the uh, new requirements come out um, or switch to something else um, so the case is okay but um, it was less than half the cost of the MSI Velux the MSI Velux was £114 this was about 57 I believe um, and yes you can notice the difference in, in quality um, but it'll do the job It'll do the job. We don't need anything flash for this for this job. It's a workhorse. Um, but, you know, I wanted the facility for the additional cooling. I wanted the ability to put a bigger power supply in so it can support the 3060 Ti. Um, and, and just, you know, to clean clean things up a little bit, really. So, um, other things that I bought is um, a new ARGB cooler to go on the CPU. And then the normal... Um, modification cables and front I.O. port um, boards very similar to what I did on the um, Dell Optiplex conversion um, which should hopefully make this go swimmingly um, so let's look at the the, opti uh, the precision now and see what we've got to do so we've got to take the 3060 Ti out obviously and then unplug all the connectors and get this motherboard out which is a very small form um, should come out without taking the power supply out I think if we're lucky um, don't know about those drive bays but they should click out fairly easy um, hopefully um, there is an SSD in here somewhere underneath that cloth there <laughs> um, that's got the OS on so obviously that and the um, SATA cables I'll take out um, to reconnect that in here not sure where I'm going to mount the SATA drive on here, unlike the Velux it hasn't got 
any dedicated areas for mounting SSDs. Um, there's also not a lot of room down the bottom at the moment because I've got um, the ARGB controller board there. That might have to mount on here somewhere um, just to free up that. I don't know. I'm going to work that out as I go along. But anyway, that's today's job. So I will show you bit by bit as I go through it and um, the, the important things I have to do. And uh, let's cross fingers and hope that it all goes well. Okay, taking the 3060 Ti out, which was really crammed in there, not ideal at all, not much room to manoeuvre, but it's highlighted uh, one thing, it, there is no SSD in there as I thought, it is actually an NVMe on the board, so even better, um, can see that um, not many connectors to take off and I should be able to get it out, maybe taking this case fan off, I don't know yet, but... Uh, that might be in the way, I'm not 100% sure, but we'll try and get it out without that, and if not, I'll take it out with that. Okay, the board was fairly easy to get out, um, no problems at all with that, just the normal screws. Um, just had to take all the cables off first, obviously, um, and also the um, CPU cooler. Um, I have quite a few of these now, um, second hand on eBay, so uh, if you want one of those, you know where to get one. Um, so the next thing to do is to clean up with some um, of these special, um, what are they called, Ar Arctic Wipes, MX Cleaner, Arctic Wipes. Clean the, the top of this up and then try and mount the brackets that are going to be required for the new CPU cooler. Um, and once I've done that, then I will be getting it mounted in the case um, and we'll start to cable up. Okay, let's have a closer look at the CPU cooler that I decided to get this time round. Um, is once again a John's bow. It was what came up, but I got the next one up, which is the CR fourteen hundred ARGB, um, which fits various AMD and um, Intel socket types. It's also got ARGB on the top, sort of plastic cover that goes over the heatsink as well. So that's going to look extra special. Um, and to fit it, you take off the, the fan, which is very easy. There's a couple of clips keeping the fan off the heatsink. And it's just a question of turning the heatsink upside down and applying the relevant bracket. Now, it comes with um, some connectors that uh, go onto the bottom of the heatsink that fit perfectly. They're actually adjustable for various platforms, but um, fit the Intel socket type on here perfectly so that the heatsink can just screw in onto the motherboard. It does come with a spare intel backplate if you haven't got one which is very handy and would have been um, handy if um, i used this for my uh, dell optiplex upgrade because that didn't have a backplate at all and there's obviously some amd um, brackets in there as well and and your C, uh, cpu paste thermal paste so all in all good buy for the price i think it was about 24 pounds or whatever um, so i've just made sure that everything's lining up I am actually going to mount that onto the motherboard now rather than do it um, when it's in the case just so I can get easily to the clips to put the fan back on the right side um, and then we're all set to go. Okay, finally got everything in. Motherboard's in. CPU cooler, ARGB is in. I've got the uh, 3060Ti in. That was a bit of a nightmare to work out how you had to take this bracket out with the screws in here on this case you have to bend the pins on the inside take this off mount your GPU and then put it on before you put the screws in if you look inside here you can see the pins that are bent back and obviously remove the two cover plates for it but it got in only just um, but the problem was with the GPU in I couldn't get to the pins that I needed to connect the modification connector for the um, external audio for up here and also the USB 2 so I didn't bother with that um, once again I've got enough USB at the back um, I don't need the audio this is a working machine it's not a listening to music machine so I wasn't too worried about that um, if you didn't have the GPU in you could do that modification first before you put your GPU in but um, on reflection, this case is a little bit tight to work with. Um, I'm not going to recommend it. Um, 
it, it has gone, but it's taken quite a while and it's very difficult, especially if you've got the roof fans in, the two roof fans you can see here, it's very difficult to get to the motherboard screws, to put the motherboard mounted in, to get to the CPU cooler, um, sorry, the CPU power here, the eight, uh, six pin, four pin, sorry. Very difficult to get to that. Um, and obviously uh, it looks still a bit tight, but everything's in sort. I've got my USB 3 connector on. Um, everything else is, is on. Um, so I'm going to put the case covers back on now and then take it upstairs and we'll have a look and see if it works. Okay, I've got it all in situ. All the tempered glass back on, all the plastic off, so all that's left to do is press the power button and pray to the gods. Well, it helps if you turn the power on at the back, doesn't it? Oh, something's happening. Oh, it'll go off though, I think, because it's just uh, what happens when the Dell power supply fires up, I think. No, things are happening. It's staying on. There's a mass of flashing lights going on here. Uh, it looks like all the fans are spinning. Um, let's see if we've got life here. We have um, the usual alerts, power button cable failure, front I.O. cable failure, rear fan failure. Now, I just tried this and it, it worked, so it's, it either times out or F1 will bypass those and we should get life. I hope we do anyway. As you can see, there's some... Uh, the ARGB cooler is matching the fans, lovely. And we've got all three fans running at the front. And it looks like all two fans running here. I'm just going to take the uh, magnetic mesh off so we can see better if that is the case. Yeah, I think it is. I can feel airflow there. Rear fan's working. Um, GPU must be working because we've got a screen. And oh, that Windows is up. I've got Windows auto loading on this and auto loading um, the Chia startup as well, which looks like it's occurred. So that looks like success to me. Um, it's been a long day. Um, I've had a few interruptions during the day, but everything seems to have gone according to a plan. But um, yes, I definitely wouldn't recommend this case for a build of this type. It is very crammed. It was very difficult to get the base on, not the tempered glass side, the other side where all your power cables and all your ARGB lighting cables are. In fact, I had to scrunch them in so tight with the actual ARGB controller board that I wasn't sure it was going to work because it was really restricted in there. So fortunately, it's not caused a problem, but um, very difficult with the amount of space you get for the extra storage for the power cables for the PSU as well. So this is a mid-tower case. Um, yes, it was cheap. It looks good, but very difficult to do a build in. I wouldn't recommend it myself. Um, halfway through it, I was wishing that I bought another MSI Velux 100R, to be honest. But anyway, let's have a look and see what, um, what these... Uh, if I can find the button. There is an LED button switch here somewhere. You can supposedly change the colours. There's all sorts of different patterns. They're all quite um got a lot of movement in them. I think there's 14 in all, but oh, oh some static colours as well, um, like red, green to blue, or a fast switching colour mode, or a, uh, this is probably a gentle transition mode, all the normal types anyway. And the static colours, blue, 
yellow, sort of teal. I do like the teal actually. And then those are. Uh, that's quite nice, the blue. And then back to the psychedelic ones. So I think we'll go for something that's not going to make the neighbours annoyed because I do leave the curtains and the window open in here just to get some extra venting for the data cabinet so if I just find that nice teal one we'll leave it on that. <clears throat> got to be here somewhere. That one. That'll do. Looks quite nice in there and that should keep it a lot cooler. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I um, hope it was interesting if nothing else um, and taught you a bit about um, you know upgrading to a, a, a case. Um, so it is partially possible once again with a T3610 precision machine you can get it into another case um, I wouldn't advise it with this case very little room to maneuver especially for the modification to the power switch as well and the power LED um, which I've still got a bit of work to do on because the power LED isn't working but um, the power switch is which uh, is, is good um, so give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it please subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you know when I put up my next content. And I'll see you all next time.